The five different immunoglobulin globulin classes are shown here on this slide. The first one is the first immunoglobulin class that's created by plasma cells during the primary response, and it readily activates complement. So the most important things are what you see here in blue. The next one is the IgA, and keep in mind the uh, structure is not important. So the IgA is always present in our body secretions like our saliva, sweat, intestinal juice, and milk. And specifically, the IgA helps to stop pathogens from attacking or attaching rather to epithelial cell surfaces like the mucous membranes and the epidermis. The IgDs are found on the B surface themselves, and they function as a B cell antigen receptor, just like IgM does. So there's some crossover a little bit in the functions. The IgG, it's important to remember that it's the most abundant, and again, accounts for about 75 to 85% of all of the circulating antibodies. The main antibody of both the secondary and the late primary responses, and it also activates complement. So when you hear complement, you should be thinking second line of defense. And then finally, the IgE, it's important regarding histamine. So it mediates inflammation, the inf inflammatory response. So that's the second line of defense. It also triggers cells to release histamine, and which is an allergic reaction. So this slide is showing antibodies, and antibodies are produced specifically from plasma cells. So what happens is that the B lymphocytes, they produce plasma cells, and those plasma cells are what makes the antibodies. So the antibodies are the protein that then is released into the plasma. So the reason this is really important is because it, re it retains the specificity or is very specific for the same antigen. So it's kind of programmed very specific for that one antigen. This is something that's unique to the humoral response. It doesn't happen for the first and the second line of defense, only the third line of defense, which is the adaptive line of defense. So how do antibodies work? So there are several steps. The first thing is, is they neutralize, so they have a defense mechanism that neutralizes and causes precipitation of antigens by forming a complex with them. So there's neutralization that happens, agglutination, which is clumping, precipitation, and then finally, complement fixation. So activating those complement proteins, which are the second line of defense. So forming this antibody antigen complex also triggers the activation of the complement protein. So there's a much more robust effect now for the entire immune system. So neutralization, the first step is the simplest part, but one of the most important defense mechanisms. Antibodies, they're going to block specific sites on the viruses, and they're gonna prevent antigens from binding to certain receptors. So the antigen antibody complex then undergoes phagocytosis. The next step is agglutination. And during agglutination, antibodies can bind the same antigenic determinant on two different antigens at the same time. And this is possible because each antibody has two, two arms and each has a specific variable region for that's unique to one antigen. So this allows for this antigen antibody complex to become cross-linked to kind of clump now. 
And again, that clumping example is agglutination. Then the third step is precipitation. If you think of precipitation as rain falling out of the sky, in this case, there is soluble molecules instead of cells that are cross-linked into complexes. When this occurs, the precipitated complexes are easier for phagocytes to engulf. So finally, the last step then is complement fixation and activation. So it's the main antibody defense mechanism against cellular antigens, so bacteria, mismatch, red blood cells, etc. It's when several antibodies bind close together to the same antigen and basically it amplifies this inflammatory response. And there's a process called opsonization that also happens as well. So the summary of all of this is that the antigen antibody complex, it doesn't directly destroy the antigens, but rather prepares them for destruction by the innate defenses, namely the phagocytosis. Remember the phagocytes is from the second line of defense. So the antibodies now go after extracellular pathogens. And extracellular being the key here, uh, because the antibodies are in the extracellular fluid. So they do not invade solid tissue unless there's a lesion that's present, for example. So this next slide now is showing the mechanism of the antibody action that we've just gone over. So we can see first here, the neutralization occurs, the initial step that happens, whereby the um, antibodies block specific sites on the viruses, which we can kind of see here. You see various antibodies blocking sites on a virus. Then that is gonna lead to agglutination Agglutination is the clumping that occurs. Then the third step is the precipitation. So now the antigens are soluble. They can be separated out of solution. And the final step is that that leads to complement activation. So that's kind of the amplification of the immune system. So the innate immune system now can kind of come in now and destroy everything. So this leads to cell lysis as well as phagocytosis. So over here we see phagocytosis where which is cell eating. So now the cell can be destroyed, the virus, it's been identified, it's uh, there's agglutination, precipitation that's happened now the phagocyte can basically eat and destroy that antigen. Inflammation can also happen. Again, a second line of defense where chemotaxis occurs, histamine release, vasodilator that's released from basophils and also mast cells. And finally, that can lead to cell lysis, destruction of the cell.